Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a shout out to my 20,630 plus Facebook followers and also to my YouTube subscribers. I don't do much on YouTube, but I still have a YouTube page and I upload my lessons and people watch. Greetings. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, those of the transatlantic and sub-Saharan slave trade. Greetings. My topic today is, what does the Bible say? That's a question. What does the Bible say? A few months ago, someone posed a question by submitting a link to my YouTube page, the Live Shabbat class YouTube site. I didn't answer it because when I clicked the link, there was this Hebrew, wo Hebrew woman married to an Edomite man trying to justify bringing her Edomite husband and Edomite child into the Most High God's house. She presented the precept Numbers 1 and 18, you know, asking is Numbers 1 and 18 is the only way to identify the nation of Israel. And then she precept Deuteronomy 23, 2 and Deuteronomy 23, 2 and 8. Let's explain these precepts. Now, number one, how do you determine your nationality if you have a mother and a father from different nations. We're going to start there. We're going to start at Numbers 1 and 18. Read that. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. When they declared. Hold, hold, hold on. Let me. Now, when they assembled the congregation, were, were there, you know, Edomites, Israelites, Ammonites, all kinds of different types of people in there? Were they assembling the congregation? Who who was who was they assembling? Now this is numbers. We are in, in the wilderness. Who who are they assembling? Dominic. Who were they assembling right here? These are things y'all should know. Y'all y'all been sitting before me almost five years now. Who were they assembling? The congregation. Who were the congregation? Uh, the Israelites. Yeah, the Israelites. They were the congregation. There was nobody else out there where they were assembling. Continue reading. Let's start over. They assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. They declared their pedigrees after their families. Their pedigrees. What's, what, what would y'all consider a pedigree? So when you get a dog, and you say the pure breed, and they're gonna give a, give it a pedigree. What they what they're trying to tell you? They're gonna give you his lineage. It's gonna tell you that oh, we breeded him with this dog. This dog was a. Well, the full like they have the pit. This dog with a full bread and pit that bred and bred with this dog here, which is full bred and pit. It's gonna have a lineage. To, you you gonna know that that dog is from a line of pits. All right. The, the, so they declare their pedigree. So if it's determining our pedigree, what is what is it saying? It's telling you that their lineage, they declared their lineage. Come on. They declared their lineage. Come on. After their families, by the house of their father. By the house of who? Their father. So, if if the father's Judah and the mother's Ephraim, what would the child be? Judah. In this instance, 
The child will be Judah. It doesn't matter what the mother is. Because the seed is of the man. That, that tells you right here in this precept right here the seed is of the man. They declare their lineage after the families by the house of their father. So if a, if a, if a man from Judah marry a, a woman from Gad, that child going to be a, 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 a child of Judah. Continue on. Deuteronomy 20. According, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. You determine your genealogy by your father, not your mother. This is clear cut. No fat. However, the sister wanted to precept Deuteronomy 23, 2, and Deuteronomy 23 and 8. To say that you can bring other nations to the house of our Elohim. This is incorrect, but I'm going to flow with it. I'm going to bring the precept out, and I'm going to explain it. We're going to start Deuteronomy 23 and 2. Read that. The bastards shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his ten generations shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Bastard. Let's, let's identify that word, you know, because, you know, people use it, and I want to make certain that we're using it correctly. Read that, Dominic. A person born of parents. What would you identify? Read what you read. Read the, uh, the word and the definition. Bastard. A person born of parents, not married to each other. So, we're talking about children out of, uh, out of wedlock. Now, a bastard doing the law of Moses was not even allowed into the congregation. It's, it, like I said, it's self explanatory because. The secret is the parent. Who could be one of the members in the congregation? A bastard child, father, could be one of the men in the congregation. They ain't going to be telling you who the father is. Because that was a, a, a serious crime during the, during, the law of Mo, during the time of Moses. You know, so it could be one of the men in the congregation so to, to keep people from breaking the law because this is law this is it would be unlawful for a bastard child to come in the congregation and that bastard child unknow, unbeknownst to to himself or herself marry their sibling which they didn't know was their sibling we're gonna get there There's a law regarding the closest of kin, which could be violated if that bastard child would wound up marrying his or her sibling, unknown to him or her. Here's the law. Read that, Leviticus 18 and 6. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The most High God didn't want that happening, so he was like, I don't want no bastard children in the congregation because I want to know who all of my children are and they need to know who all of their, their parents are so no bastard child should be running around in the congregation and mess around and marry their siblings that's a law the closest of kin you can't marry your closest of kin so you can't be in, in there until the 10th generation till you be mixed with so many other people that now you know okay you ain't marrying your closest of kin no more Alright, let's continue on. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, the Most High didn't want us hating an Edomite or an Egyptian, because uh, an Edomite is our brother. So, he is Jacob's brother. But, I will show you that this changed. This was when we came out of Egypt. We weren't supposed to hate an Edom. I called Edom hadn't done anything to us at this time. No, no, you know, and he told us not to hate an Egyptian. They hadn't done nothing to us at this time either. But let's tell you when it changed. Let's get Amos. We're going to start at Amos 1 and 9. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity of Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Whole captivity, not of. Read that again. 
the whole captivity to Edom and remember not the brotherly covenant. Okay. So Tyrus or Tyre is the city of the Canaanites, who which is the Egyptians, who rounded up the children of Israel and sold them to the Edomites. This is all what it's telling you. Grecians are that so called white men. So for three transgressions, let's let's see what the three transgressions were. Because I have them enumerated. What if I got out there for three transgressions and for four? Let's get Joel three and four. Dominic, read that. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And what has ye to do with me? O Tyree and Zidar. All the coast of Palestine. Will he bring me a recompense? If you recompense me, <coughs> Swifty and speedily will I recur and recompense upon your own head. This is the transgression of Tyrus or Tyree. Continue Joel 3 and 5. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold that have carried into your temples my goodly blooded things. Transgression number 1. They robbed the Most High God's people. Joel 3 and 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Transgression number two. They sold the Most High God's people to Edom or the Grecians or that so-called white man. Transgression number three. They removed us out of our land. So for three transgressions, no, for four, the three transgressions that Tyree did, they robbed us, they sold us, and they removed us. Robbed, sold, and removed us out of the land. Let's deal with Edom's three transgressions. Because this is when the Most High God told us not to, we should not abhor an Edomite. You know, when we came out of, out of, out of Egypt, we weren't supposed to abhor them. They hadn't done anything to us, but for three transgressions and for four, the Most High God has changed his mind. And, and, his, it, and like I said, he owed him now. Let's see, let's read Amos 1 and 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did not pursue. You no know, way, read that again. Because, because he did not pursue his. There no, I don't see no not anywhere there. Read that again. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear pe perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Okay, transgression number one. It's, it's already tell you all the transgressions Edom did here. Edom pursued his brother, Jacob, with the sword. They are still pursuing us with the gun today, which is equivalent to the sword back then. Transgression number two. Edom did not have pity or mercy for his brother Jacob. And transgression number three. Edom has had a perpetual hatred for his brother Jacob. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Read that, Dominic. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and that shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword and the time of their calamity and the time of their iniquity had an end. So let's just tell you right here, in the time of their calamity, when we were already in trouble, they were slaying us. They had no pity. They had a perpetual hatred and they were shedding the blood and, our, and, and during our calamity. When, we were, when all this stuff was happening to us, they showed no pity. Now if they was our brother. They should have been the ones coming and helping us like, you know what, we need, to, we need to show some love to our brother. They were not showing love. When we were, when, in the time of our calamity, Edom was the, was the worst. Was the worst brother. He was part of the calamity. And when our calamity had an end after slavery, after the uh, proclamation of, what do you call it, the proclamation... What, what what that Lincoln gave the uh, uh, Emancipation Proclamation? They should have just let us alone, left us alone. But no. Continue on Amos one and twelve. But I will send a fire upon Teman, who shall devour the pl the palaces of Basra. Now. I'm going to identify Teman and Basra because he said he's going to, he's going to send a fire upon Teman. So Teman 
and shall devour the palaces of Basra. Let's understand what Teman is. Identify, let's get identified with Teman. Teman was the name of an Edomite clan. Was the name of what? Of an Edomite clan. Was what's the people? Come on. And it's eponym, eponym, according to the Bible, in an ancient biblical town of Arabia, Petria. So Teman was an Edomite clan. It was a a, 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 a a clan of white people. That's all it said. So Teman is referring to the people. All right. Basra. Let's understand what Basra Basra. Means sheepfold and was a pastoral city in Edom, southeast of the Dead Sea. According to the biblical narrative, it was the capital city of Edom in the homeland of Jacob's twin brother Esau. Okay. So Teman refers to the Edomite clan, a tribe, and Basra referred to the Edomite cities. All of these Edomite people in these Edomite cities will be destroyed with fire. This is all what, what uh Amos one and twelve is saying. It's gonna send it's gonna send a fire upon the people, and it's gonna devour those cities that the Edomites live in, the capitals of those of, of, of the Edomite cities. It's not saying it's going to devour the city of Basra as it was back then. It just said, I'm going to destroy the capitals of all these white people, their main cities, of all the Edomites. You know, you got to understand how to interpret the Bible. If your fear of the Most High is not in it, you're not going to ever get to this understanding. Let's get to, let's give a dude around 23 eight. This this is the pivotal verse that she is pointing to. We're gonna get the explanation of that too. Deuteronomy 23 and 8. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Okay. Now she is saying the children that are a begotten of an Edomite shall enter into the third generation. To, uh, into the third their third generation. What is this referring to? Begotten of them is is what the young lady was referring. Here's the million dollar question: Are we referring to begotten by the women or by the men? Let's let's see. Let's use the Bible as an example. Is begotten by the women or by the men? men. By the who? It's begotten by the men. You know you you know like I said, the Bible don't never use a woman's term by the thing begotten. Let's let's give it an example. Genesis. This is one one example of many. Genesis six and ten. And Noah begat three sons. Begat what? Begat three sons. Okay, he didn't say his mother. Where's Noah's wife at? Noah begat three sons. Come on. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They they are the generation of everybody. Everybody stems from those three men. In this example, I'm sure Noah had a wife, but the seed is of the man. If the man is an Israelite, so is the child. So, all Deuteronomy 23 and 8 is saying, all the children that are begotten by the man, his seed can enter the congregation in the third generation. This means the great-grandson, a great-granddaughter, can enter the congregation as a Hebrew. This is all that it means. If the seed is not from the nation of Israel, then that child is not from the nation of Israel. It's not if it's not begotten of the man in, the, in, in Israel, it's not a child of of of, uh, of Israel. It's it's never uh, it's never permissible to come into the congregation. Number two, the Most High God does not want us marrying the other nations. That's the law. So, if you don't want us marrying the other nations, all the offspring that. The, the the child of the of the, the child of Moses, like God don't even want even the, during this time during the, during the laws of Moses the Most High God did not even want the children of of a man and a, and an offspring of another nation in the congregation until the third generation. Third. The Most High does not want us marrying the other nations. That's the law. Let's get Deuteronomy 73. Come on. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, 
Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. The, the Most High doesn't want the Hebrew woman marrying their sons or the Hebrew man marrying their daughter. I've seen many disputes. I've, I've seen many dispute this, saying that's not what it means. However, the Bible is redundant and it loaded with examples. Let me show you a few precepts when it referred to the law. Okay, let's get 1 Kings 11 and 1. Start. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. All these women that King Solomon loved, the Most High God called these strange women. These Egyptians were Canaanites, Chinese, Moabites, Japanese, Ammonites, so-called white women, Edomites, and more Canaanites, Hittites. Let's continue, 1 Kings 11 and 2. Of the nations concerning with the, which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them. You shouldn't do what? You shall not go into them. Okay. Neither shall they come un in unto you. So, this is basically saying, Ye shall not go into them. Who goes into them? Any other nation? Ye shall not go into them. Who is the ye? Us. Okay, male or female? Male. Male. The men should not go into the women. And what else? And what else? Continue reading. Ye should not go into them. For surely. No, wait a minute. Read the other poor. Other poor. Neither shall they come in unto you. Now they're coming into you. What? What is that? The female or the male? Both. Neither shall they come into you. The female. That, that's the female aspect. That's a man having sex with a female. So the the most I got is quoting Deuteronomy seven and three right here. Read Deuteronomy seven and three again. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. You should not go, you you should not go into them. Come on. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. And neither shall they go into you. Neither shall they come in unto you. That's what it's saying. Deuteronomy 73, right here. All right. Uh, come on. Let's finish uh, 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 1 Kings 11 and 2. On the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You should not go into them. Neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. So, what is the Most High God quoting Deuteronomy 7 and 3 and 4? Deuteronomy 7, three, uh, verses 3 and 4? Our sons are not supposed to marry their daughters, nor our daughters are supposed to marry their sons. Hebrews, who are diligently following the law, understand why many dispute these laws, statutes and commandments. Proverbs 11.21. Dominic, read that. Your hands join in hand. The wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. You can join hands with them as long as you want. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Only the seed of the righteous. Those keeping the commandments of the Most High God are going to be delivered. Though you join to them, they are still going to be punished. To understand the Most High God's word, let's, let's get Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. Hmm. The Most High God gives those understanding who fear His judgments and keep His commandments. If you are violating His laws and trying to isolate a precept to justify your sins, you are easily sliced with righteous precepts. How do we recognize the Hebrews or the Israelites? First, we start with the law. Deuteronomy 4.27 Read that. 
and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. The Most High God scattered his disobedient children into all nations. The first Jews that came to the Americas did not come from the west coast of Africa, but from Spain. They were the first Jews that came over into the America. First soul here. How did we get into these lands? This is simple stuff, but let's let's read that because the fact is, this is how you recognize us. We're gonna be scattered in all these lands, and this is this tells us how we got there. Dominic, read that. Dominic, read loud. Jordan, read that. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Wait a minute, be, like, you got to be more specific. Look, re, and there, you know, th th those were specific points. Read that again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Okay, see, now people get a bit twisted because they say, you're going to be sold to your enemy and nobody's going to buy you. It's telling you you're going to be sold, then it says no, no man shall buy you. What does that buy, buy mean, no man shall buy you? What, is, what does that mean? Like save you? Or... Yeah, because at once upon a time, when 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 Israel when Israel was righteous amongst the, the sight in the sight of the Most High, you know, and somebody was poor, they went to a, a, a family, and they sold themselves to, to so that they could pay off debt or something, and they worked the debt off for a few years. And but if if uh, say one of their closest friends had money, a relative had money to redeem them, they can go and say, how much do you owe? Oh, he owed three hundred dollars. Okay, here's the money, and he can go free. But in this slavery here, nobody's gonna be able to come and redeem you, saying, "Hey, here's here's five hundred million dollars. Let all my all my people go." And, and like I said, it ain't nobody. Like I said, the fact is, there's something wrong. And, and you know, the comedians make fun of it all the time, saying that you know, not one ship of 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 Africans came. Asking about their people. Because the fact is, they are the ones that sold us. That's what the hell they gonna ask about us for. And now they're gonna come and say that we sorry. We people come back come back to uh, to Africa. Man, y'all gotta y'all done lost y'all damn mind. The fact is, they the ones sold us. Now nobody came all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to redeem us. Because, guess what? They were the ones stealing our stuff, getting rich. And then once they stole all our, all our stuff, like Mansa Musa had so many of us slaves, like 20, 15, 20,000. When he went into a city, he, he, he turned the city upside down because he, he had so much gold. Jacked the price of everything up sky high because they had so much gold. Because he had stole all our gold. Put us into slavery, and he was just going from city to city doing that. Hebrew cities, stealing our stuff, taking our stuff. You know, imagine Musa wasn't one of us. He was actually our enemy, stealing our stuff. The Jews were not only sold in America, but also in China, Japan, Iran, Syria, Egypt, etc. In all lands. Before the Africans and Arabs sold us to, to the so-called white man, the Arabs were selling us to all of these countries. The Arabs have been selling Jews into slavery since 670 AD, the Battle of the Fars, since the time of Muhammad. Muhammad was the one that start, started the slave trade, started the sub-Saharan slave trade. So when y'all when y'all start worshiping that Muhammad, you know, 
for for a so-called black man that 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 was sold all over by 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 Muhammad and he started the slave trade and he thinks it's his right his descendants still right now think it's their right over there in Arab lands to sell to, to sell us still. As prophesied by Moses, the prophet, the Most High will send the Hebrews back into slavery with ships. We are not talking about a few slaves sold here and there, but the entire nation of Israel was cargo sold to all nations. Their mode of transportation, cargo slave ships. It doesn't matter where you claim Israelites are located, it's highly likely that they are. It's highly likely they are located there because the fact is we are everywhere. You know, and 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 and, and the fact is that the the primary tribes of Gad uh, uh, the primary tribes of Ephraim and stuff it, it's, it's tells you in gen uh, gives you hints in Genesis uh, what is it, chapter 49 and it tells you in, in that chapter basically where these tribes are going to be it also tells you in uh, what is it uh, Hosea where, where some of these tribes are, are in pleasant lands you know, so a lot of the, a lot of the tribes of, of of the northern kingdom, it gives you a hint where these tribes are located. Number three, Esau is Edom, the so-called white man. We don't want to ever get that get that twisted. And and the fact is, I know that many of you who wants to justify your doings, you attempt to claim other nations. Or Esau, you want to claim other nations as being Esau? That's like the Arabs. I agree. The present-day Arabs that you see are mostly Edomites. They are not the direct descendants of Ishmael. Here's an example. Now, I brought these these precepts out, but the fact is they go hand in hand, and 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 this is how you determine who the Arabs are actually who who the actually actual Arabs are. Let's get songs of Solomon 1 and 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as curtains of Solomon, as the curtains of Solomon. So, that as the kit to tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, what are they basically saying here? Dominic, are you reading? Turn around, turn around, face me. T turn around. Now, what is they saying here? As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. What, what is, what's, what's the point he's trying to make here? Read that again. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. He's comparing, comparing his, his house to to the tents of Kedar, to, to Kedar's house. He said, we're the same. The tents of Kedar, uh, I'm black and comely, same as the tents of Kedar, same as the curtains of Solomon. So, his family and my family, we're from black people. So, he said he's black and handsome, old daughter of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. So, we got to figure out who Kedar is. King Solomon is saying that he is black and handsome as the tents of Kedar. King Solomon is not referring to the actual tents, but the people of Kedar that are the, that are the same as the people of Solomon, or the curtains of Solomon. Since Solomon has made a comparison to Kedar, you need to know who is Kedar. Genesis 25 and 13. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. Sons of who? Of the sons of Ishmael. Okay, Ishmael, his mother was an Egyptian. Dog, these were dog dog people. You know, his mother was an Egyptian slave. Hagar. So, born, you know, was was a, a, a maid servant in, uh, for Sarah. So, she was a dog, dog skinned people. All right, come on. Sons of Ishmael, come on. Start over, just, just start over. 
And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by the names according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajah and Kedar. Kedar, okay, come on. And Abdit and Adbil and Mi and Mibsan. So these are the uh, are the children of uh, Is Ishmael. Kedar was one of them. This one is the second son of Ishmael. There you have it. The true descendants of Ishmael are dark-skinned people. Those running the Arab countries today are the Ottoman Turks. From 1299 to 1923 is when they ran, they ran, they they were they were in total control of that land. Edomites, who were defeated during World War One and the empire was broken up by the Allies. The Allies defeated the Ottoman Turks and broke that land up. But the power base still they they control that land. Those all of those Ottoman Turks that that's running Egypt, that's running that's running those lands, the Arab lands. All the dark skinned Arabs, so called Arabs, uh, uh, are not the ones that they uh, they present to the front. So what is Edom's nationality? Let's first establish this through historical data. Let's get excerpts from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. Read that part. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General okay, let's let's break that up. So, 65 BC. That was before before Christ was born. General Pompey captured Jerusalem. Now, this is all in the time of the Old Testament. So, when General Pompey captured Jerusalem, Christ was uh, was born around 4 A.D. So, the Romans had established themselves in Jerusalem for about 60, 70 years, 69 years. When Christ died, they still were in control. All right, come on. Let's let's get uh, in seventy A.D. Come on. In seventy A.D., General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over a million Jews flooded to Africa fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. It was selling us back even back then, as far as during the Roman Empire. So, we were still, be, we were slaves even during the Roman Empire. They, they, had, they said, Titus and Vespasian put an end to the Jewish state with a great slaughter. And this could be, this, this was recorded by Titus, by, uh, by Josephus who re who rode in. He was a Jew who rode in with Titus. And he watched the slaughter of his people. Events between 65 BC and 70 AD can be referred referenced in the Bible. Let's take a casual stroll through history. Jerome Pompey had already conquered the Jews and were running Jerusalem during the time of Christ. Matthew 2 and 16. Let's read that. And Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Beth Bethlehem, and the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now, see, the fact is that if your spirit is not connected close enough to this Bible to understand this is how the white man act toward our children right now, today, the same white man that, that slaughtered all the children during this time. You know, I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I was on Facebook, somebody took a picture, I don't know if it was a protest or something, somebody took a picture of a cop spraying like a six-year-old girl with mace. Now, the woman, the, the mother up here, he's spraying down here at, at, at her children. See, the fact is, when, when you know when you when you know your enemy hates you to the point where they hate your defenseless children, purposely spraying them spraying them with mace. 
and, and, and he probably didn't get no reprimand, reprimand for, for spraying the children. You know, it, 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 it amazes me why you Negroes struggle so hard, want to struggle so hard to be around this white man. Why you just don't connect with your brothers and your sisters and say, let's put our monies together and get away from these people. Because they hate us, they hate our children, we know they hate us. Dominic, will you please? From this, from this precept, I, I like to ask two questions. Who was Herod? Who was Herod? And where those were those babies of his people? Let's get Un, uh, let's get to understand who Herod was. This, this is a, from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Read, read that, Herod, George. Herod, Idumian, Greek and Roman name for Edom, rulers of Palestine, 47 B.C. through A.D. 79. So, this is, Herod, so these are the people that they established in the land as leaders and in, in kings in the land when Pompey, conquered Jerusalem. It took him a couple of years to, to establish them because he came in in 65 B.C. But Herod was established in 47 B.C. So it, it, it took about 10, 13 years or something like that to establish them. No, 18 years to establish them. But they established Herod in the land during that time all the way to uh, 70 A.D. 79 A.D. So there were Herods in the land all the way during that time of Christ and after Christ and after the Apostle Paul and everybody. Come on. Well, it started with an Antipater whom Julius Caesar made pro procurator of Judea in 47 B.C. 1. Herod the Great, first procurator of Galilee, the king of the Jews, 37 to 4 B.C. Built to Caesarea Temple at Jerusalem, slaughtered children at Bethlehem. Well, this is this is who we refer to right here, Matthew in Matthew two and sixteen. He slaughtered children just because he got mad and wanted to wanted to kill Christ as 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 an infant. So the fact is, this white man wanted Christ dead when he was a child. What what did it change when he became an adult? Herod, right here, tried to kill Christ, killed all of these babies. Anything two years and less, he killed all of these babies during that time. If you can't tell me that's not killing, trying to kill Christ, it didn't, did somebody say, oh, the narrative changed because, uh, uh, all no, the Jews killed Christ. No, it's the same way when, when, when they killed our leaders today. Oh, they'll send a stupid Negro after, after them, but you know what? He's doing the bidding of a white man. The fact is, Christ, uh, 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 Malcolm X was not killed by the two men with the double barrel shotgun. The fact is, those those uh, bullets that that uh, that killed Malcolm X did not come from those shotguns. It came from up top. The, the, uh, the FBI had rented that that place out and built those rooms in there, and they they shot him from up top. They just made. You know, they made the they gave the Negroes sh uh, blank shells to make it seem like they killed him. No, white folks killed him. Cause they they just loaded their gun with blanks. Okay. So, Adumia pertained to Edom, Greek and Roman name for Edom. So, same thing, compact, Zundering Compact Bible Dictionary. These are white scholars. So, I'm not, I'm, this is not my, my, uh, my information. These come from the so-called white scholars. They know who they are. The Romans were an Edomite nation that conquered a dark nation, prompted themselves up as rulers over them, and without mercy killed innocent babies. Simply because Herod was angry, because the wise men did not return to him and provide him the location of Christ. Now, in my lesson, 
Let's get let, let, turn back to page page two, and let's get Amos one and eleven. Read that. Thus said the Lord for the transgressions of for, Edom. For what? For three transgressions of Edom. And for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did not pursue his brother. It was Read that he, again. Because he did pursue his... Because, because he did pursue. Come on. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. And it cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually. And he kept his wrath forever. Now... Right here, read Matthews 2 and 16. And y'all keep Amos 1 and 11 in, in, in mind when, when you read that. Read Matthew 2 and 16. And Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. Had no pity for the children. And in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. There you go. For, for three transgressions and for four. You can't say thou shalt not abhor Edomite in, 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 in your, in you, cause he is your brother. The most like God said for three transgressions and for four, and then it's showing you his transgressions right here. Went out and killed all of these babies in Bethlehem. With, with, that had done nothing to him. Cast off all pity. And y'all still love this, this, this so-called white man. You cling to him and you try to justify every damn thing he does. Don't bring that crap to me. I, 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 I'm not the brother to try to hear that. You know, that's like you calling the wrong damn number. You got the wrong number with me. Edomites don't slaughter their own babies. If these babies were of their nation, there would be a memorial for them right now. If someone had slaughtered all of these babies, there would be a remembrance of these babies right now, or a remembrance during some, throughout some historic history, uh, some era of, of, of the Edomite uh, period. There ain't no re remembrance of these, of, of, of them slaughtering these children. Hell, you 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 can tell like right now. Uh, uh what, what is that? Uh, nine eleven. There's a memor memorial for that every every year since nine eleven occurred. The the so called Holocaust. There there's a memorial for that every since it occurred. White folks ain't gonna ain't gonna have their babies slaughtered and there be no a memorial for it. That that goes to tell you right now that was not their nation. You know, the Bible, see, the fact is, the Bible is a true book. But the fact is, a lot of y'all take this book and, and really don't believe in the things that's in it. And the, and the things that's, that's evident. Because if this white man had a, their babies slaughtered like this, there would be a memorial for these babies at least a couple of hundred years. You would, they, they would have had that. They, they, there's no mention of, of them uh, memorializing this event. This Bible doesn't belong to them. And the people that was over, because the Romans conquered them in 65 BC, they were white folks over some black people. And they didn't give a damn. That's just like white folks over black folks today. They don't give a damn about you and your people. Let's continue. Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Christ was warning the Jews regarding the pending prophecy, instructing them what to do to survive the ordeal. Now, this is this is his prophecy, and he was instructing us what to do. <coughs> this is when General Vespasian and his son Titus rode into Jerusalem, putting an end to the Jews. Josephus, a Hebrew, rode in with Titus 
and he recorded the event. Now, forgive me for this this being a little a little long, lengthy, but I I, I felt it important for to to bring this to light on this in this story here. So, this is what Josephus wrote in his writings, showing that there was no mercy or no pity for three transgressions of Edom and for four. Read that. Well, the holy. Where, where, you, where you reading? Excerpts from Josephus, complete works, chapter five, page eighty-eight through eighty-nine. Wait, what? Page eight eighty-eight through eight eighty-nine. While the holy house was on fire, <laughs> everything was plundered that came to hand, and ten thousand of those that were caught were slain. Nor was there a com commiseration of any age of or any reverence of gravity, but children and old men and profane persons and priests were all slain in the same manner so that this war went round all sorts of men and brought them to destruction and as well those that made supplication for their lives as though that defended themselves by fighting okay slow down now this is saying a whole lot number one they didn't give a damn who they killed men women children people praying begging for their lives these white folk didn't care. They slaughtered 10,000 at a time. Nobody was saved. Men, women, children, they went in there and they killed men, women, and children. No, like I said, this, see, the fact is, y'all gotta understand, this is not a war. This is a damn slaughter. Because, you know, when you, when you are having a war, you got, what, what, what makes a war a war? What makes a war a war? If you got a gun and I'm unarmed and you shoot me, is that a war? We were in battle. Is, is that a war? No. If you if you got little children crawling around on the floor and you shoot them, you say you in war. You at war. Is that a war? No. See, this is the this is the fact. Josephus was, was describing things that this so-called white man does right now today. He go in, declare war on a country, and kill all of these folks just to take their oil, take their resources, and kill the people in the land and to, just to get what they want. But he called it a war. Like in the war in Iraq, they killed over five or 600,000 men, women, and children. Not, not military people. But they came in peace. All right, come on. The flame was also carried a long way and made an echo together with the groans of those that were slain. And because this hill was high and the works at the temple were very great, one would have thought the whole city had been on fire. Nor can one imagine anything either greater or more terrible than this noise. For there was at once a shout for the Roman legions, who were marching all together, and the sad clamor of the seditious, who were now surrounded with fire and sword. The people also that were left above were beaten back upon the enemy, and under a great consternation, and made sad moans at the calamity they were under. The multitude also that was in the city joined in the outcry with those that were upon the hill. And besides, many of those that were worn away by the famine and, and their mouths almost closed. When they, they saw the fire of the holy house, they exerted their utmost strength and broke out in the, into groans and outcries again. Peria did also return the echo as well as the mountains round about the city, and augmented the forces of the entire noise. Yet was the misery itself more terrible than this disorder, for one would have thought that the hill itself on which the temple stood was seething hot, as full of fire on every part of it, that the blood was larger in nowhere in quantity than the fire. Wait a minute, what? 
that the blood was larger in quantity than the fire. So they killed so many people that it was more blood than fire. Blood saturated the ground. It was that many people that, that these Romans killed. And these people didn't have no guns and no, no weapons. They had few weapons. Not not to not to fight them, but the fact is you can see you can tell how these Romans fell upon these people that they were not their people. The same way when the white man come in your neighborhood today. When he fall upon you today, he ain't going to give you any mercy, no show, no pity. The most I got is telling you for three transgressions out for four because they show they have no pity on you. They show no mercy. They're going to come with the sword. And they have a... They have a, 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 a They have a hatred, a perpetual hatred, a everlasting hatred. So with the fuel of hatred and the, 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 the uh, lack of mercy and, and a sword and guns, they ain't showing no mercy for you. So when they come upon you, y'all talk all that noise, I'm telling you. You in your captivity today. So when you read historical books, you already know who these people are by just reading if you comprehend anything but you know what a lot of y'all read words and don't understand a damn thing you read I feel sorry for you because you know y'all waste too much damn time reading stuff and don't understand what it means alright come on and those that were slain more in number than those that slew them for the ground did nowhere appear visible for the dead bodies that lay on it but the soldiers went over heaps of those of these bodies, as they ran upon such as fled from them. And now it was that the multitude of the robbers were thrust out of the inner court. The multitude of what? The multitude of the robbers. Let me ask y'all something. Now, you see that, that these Romans were not having mercy upon the so-called Jews who were the blacks. Now the multitude of the robbers, were they our people? Because the, the Romans was into a, a, a frenzy killing everything that, that they saw that was black. So the multitude of the robbers, what were they? Um. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is your history. This tells you who, go, who stole our stuff. This is your history right here. The multitude of the robbers who was in there taking King Solomon's writings... A King David stuff, all the things that we had in the temple. We had a lot of gold and all this other stuff. All these books, the robes and clothing and things that we had in there. The multitude of the robbers had the, 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 the Roman soldiers made them leave, but they didn't leave empty handed. They, they didn't tell them, hey, put that stuff back. We're going to burn it all up. No, you, you saved me some. When you sell this stuff, I want, I want some of it. I bet the captain was telling them robbers that. You know where I live. I want, I want half of that gold you got right there. So, they, they, this, is, this is when they stole all our stuff. And, and all of these, you know, King Solomon was into all of that, that, that uh, wickedness and that demo, demonology and all that stuff. How, how these white folks doing all this baphomet and, and doing all the little wicked stuff they're doing now because they got his writing they got all his works that he, he had left in the temple okay multitude of the robbers were thrust out start there and now it was the mo that the multitude come up And now it was that the multitude of the robbers were thrust out of the inner court of the temple by the Romans and had much ado to get into the outer court and from thence into them and from thence into the city while the remainder of the populace fled into the cluster of that... Wait a minute, hold on. I just thought about some. Were thrust out of the inner court of the temple by the Romans. Now... They don't stole all this stuff. Even there were some people still alive that, of the Jews that were still alive. So they wasn't thrust out. They were being protected to get that stuff out of the out, out, out of the temple because they were robbing them, and, and, and those Jews probably were going to probably going to protect and get their stuff back from them. 
So the Romans, yeah, thrust them out, but they, they helped them out. All right, come on, continue on. While the remainder, while the remainder of the populace fled into the in, into the cluster of the outer court, as for the priest, some of them plucked up from the holy house the spikes that were upon him, with their bases, which were made of lead, and shot them at the Romans instead of darts. Because they had nothing else to fight them with, so they went and started tearing stuff off in, of of the temple to to fight back. Come on. Come on. But then as they gained nothing by so doing, and as the fire burst out upon them, they retired to the wall that was eight cubits broad, and there were and there they tarried. Yet did two of these the two of these of eminence among them who might have saved themselves by going over to the Romans, or have borne up with the courage and taken their fortune with the others throw themselves into the fire and were burnt together with the holy house. Their names were Marius, the son of Belgus, and Joseph, the son of Delius. So these men preferred to just die than to be captured by the Romans and put into slavery. They were, they were permanent men that the Romans probably would have, you know, took them, had mercy on them, took them into uh, custody or something. But they were, they, they like, you know what, we're going to die with, with our people. But the fact is, all of these Jews did not uh, listen to Christ. This would happen to our people for being disobedient because Christ warned them and they did not listen. They were being fooled by these priests and stuff when Christ was telling them, when you see Jerusalem compared with army, they didn't believe nothing Christ said. This is what caused their death, their demise. Continue on. Two, and now the and now the Romans, judging that it was in vain to spare, it was round about the holy house for all those places, as also the remains of the clusters and the gates. Two expected, the one on the east two side. Accepted. Two accepted, the one on the east side and the one the other on the south side. Both which, however, they burnt afterward. They also burnt down the treasure chambers in which was an immense quantity of money and an immense number of garments and other precious goods were reposted, reposited. There were repo there reposited. And to speak all in a few words, there it was the entire riches of the Jews were heaped up together while the rich people had there built themselves chambers to contain such furniture. The soldiers also came to the rest of the clusters that were in the outer court of the temple, whether the women and children... Now, wait, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. Now, you see all these riches and stuff that they said, all this stuff? Did, did, did they say they burnt that? All this money and all these clothes? Did you see it mentioned that they burnt that and reposited it? Oh, they, they took this stuff. Let's, let's get an understanding what repositive means. Because I don't think it means, you know, they dispersed that stuff amongst themselves. They, they, they did not uh, uh, take this stuff and and burn it. They didn't burn, you know, because white folks greedy. Just like when they burned Black Wall Street down, they took all the stuff out of them houses and pianos and, and all of the furniture and, 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 the, and the silverware and all that stuff. They they took all of that stuff out. Let's see what "reposited" mean. To put away, a deposit, or store up. Replace from, yeah. So 
they 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 put that away. They stored that up. Wonder where they stored it up. That's a devil was a good word of saying that they stole that stuff. They reposited it into their into their possessions. They stored that stuff up. They did they did not they did not burn that down. When they when they when they found all of that the treasures of, of the Jews, they 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 stole it. Now let, let, let me get you back to uh y'all get back to page No, we'll, we'll, we'll just continue on. Let's continue on. We'll finish this up. Let's, let's continue on. And a great mixed multitude of the people fled in numbers, about 6,000. But before Caesar had determined anything about these people, or given the commanders any orders relating to them, the soldiers were in such a rage that they set the cloister on fire, by which means it came to pass that some of these were destroyed by throwing themselves down headlong, and some were burnt in the cloisters themselves, nor did any one of them escape with his life. So this is the same this is the same nature of this so called white man when he gets into a a, 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 a a murdering frenzy amongst us today. Before order can be put out, it's gonna be death first. He's gonna kill everybody. Before before they can say hold your fire, he gonna he gonna empty every bullet before he give before he adhere to that order. He gonna kill everybody in the room. This is Esau right now today. This is this is his nature. Before they can get word for what Caesar uh, uh, wanted them to do, these soldiers had killed everybody. All these women and men, women and children in this cluster. They had to jump off of a cliff because we were in a hot, you know, where Jerusalem was, it's a, it was built on a high cliff. That's how we built our cities. So, this was Esau over the so called blacks, the Jews. You know, he, he he showed no mercy for in anybody. Let's 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 get that. Let's let's y'all get the Bible. Get Deuteronomy twenty eight because it's telling you about our enemy that the Most High God is going to send against us, and that enemy is going to show no mercy. Twenty eight and I think it's uh fifty. I think. Okay, 28 and 50. Read. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. They don't show, per they, they do not regard, and right here, because the, the, for three transgressions of a four, they got no pity. They show no mercy to you, have no mercy towards you. And they hate you, they hate you forever. Let's continue over with Luke. Luke 21 and 21. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Now, based upon what Josephus wrote, did they listen to Christ? Based upon what Josephus wrote, did they listen to Christ? This warning right here. He telling them, when you see the, uh, when you see the, uh, uh, the Romans coming, surrounding the city, Flee into the mountains. Did they listen? Because if they did listen, that, that city would have been empty. There would be nobody in there. They would have been like, man, the Romans coming. What did, what did Christ say? Man, it's time to get out of here. Christ instructed the Jews, when you see the Romans coming, run into Egypt. And those that are in the country side flee and don't come back into the city. Continue on. Luke 21, 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written, that are written 
may be may be fulfilled. These be the days that are written in the Torah and the books of the prophets, such as Daniel, Luke twenty one twenty four. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, till the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Christ knew that the Jews would not listen to him. Thus they fell by the sword, and were led into slavery into all nations. Since the Jews are not in Jerusalem, the land is controlled by the Gentiles until everything is accomplished. Zechariah 12 and 2 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Now, is this referring to the land Jerusalem or the people? I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. Now, when you envision this precept, you look at how our communities are set up. We are Jerusalem, the so-called blacks, in the hood. And the people round about are all the people that's in your neighborhood selling you stuff that are not your people. It's going to be a cup of trembling for all of those people in your hood selling you all this unclean food, all of these things that, that y'all don't supposed to be buying like this, this hair and all this, these weaves and stuff, this blonde hair that y'all putting in y'all heads and all this stuff. You know, every, everybody that's selling you stuff are not your people. They go, it's going to be a, Jerusalem, the people, it's going to be a cup of trembling to those people. Because all, in all the communities that we are, we got, you know, we got, uh, East Indian or the Arabs running the gas stations, Chinese and Koreans selling food, nails and hair and all that stuff. You got the white man's grocery stores and, 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 and supermarkets. You got, you got all of these different nations round about you selling you stuff. It's going to be a cup of trembling for them. We are Jerusalem. In that day, the Jews, the so-called blacks, or Judah, Benjamin and Levi, will be a cup of trembling to all the nations. The environment is perfect for this. You, you have all of these nations in our community ex exploiting a mindless people who have no knowledge of self and no knowledge of the Elohim. Let's get Jeremiah 4.22. For my people is foolish. They what? For my people is foolish. They foolish as hell. Our people foolish as hell. Come on. They have not known me. They don't know the Most High God. Come on. They are sottish children. They are stupid children. Come on. And they have none understanding. They don't understand this word. They don't understand who they suppose, who they are, uh, who their God is. Come on. They are wise to do evil. Oh man, our, our people are wise to do evil. They can take some cocaine and become a chemist. To sell crack or, or to their people in the streets, you know, they they know how to alter clips and all this stuff to to, to make them fit. You know, they, they they know all this stuff about dangerous things. Why to do evil? Come on, why to do evil? But to do good, they have no knowledge. They don't know how to, they don't understand this Bible how to do good. This is what you see in our communities: foolish people. Who do not know themselves of their God. When the Most High God tells you that you have no knowledge of self or understanding, believe Him. All of these nations are exploiting our condition. So when the Most High chooses Zion and fight for the so-called blacks, a cup of trembling would be in each of these nations' hands. It's only a matter of time when the Most High God chooses Zion again. So tell you on Zechariah 12 and 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. When the Most High put the cup of trembling in these nations' hands, who are exploiting, killing, and stealing from the so-called blacks, he is saving the tents of Judah first. Not saying that he's not going to save Ephraim and uh, in, uh, of the of the ten tribes first. He going he going to save the tents of Judah first. All right, come on, Zechariah twelve and eight. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, 
and that and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Trembling would come when the Most High God defends us, becomes our power again, and He's going to defend the house of He's going to defend Jerusalem first, which means the so-called blacks, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. He's going to defend us first. Because there's going to be an angel before us, and, and like I'm saying, the fact is that cup of trembling is going to be in the hands of all of these nations round about trying to exploit us, and he's going to defend us first. Not saying he, he he's not, he, but because he don't want the other ten tribes, or other nine tribes, to to say that you know it, it be exalted above us. He's going to save us first. <coughs> Because King David was that, that that important to the Most High God, and Christ came even out of King David. Let's let's continue on. Zechariah twelve and three. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. What's that? Burdensome stone. Mm. Just continue on. Continue on. And all that burden themselves with the it shall be cut in pieces. That's basically what it means. Burden some stone. Everybody that burden themselves with with it to be cut in pieces. Come on. Though all the peop though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. When the most high God is defending us, it will be a burden of stone to all these nations who have invested millions of dollars to exploit us. The real Jews. How would they recover their investment? Yeah, how how do you, how do nations gonna recover their investments? Because they have burdened themselves in exploiting us. Oh they're going back before uh deals and stuff, or how they gonna exploit and sell all their wares to us? They, they they create all kinds of schemes to sell you stuff that you don't even need. You know. They they they, they uh Start by marketing a lot of these these so-called drug dealers and stuff, having them wearing this old foolish stuff, putting on dresses and stuff like that, wearing women handbag, uh, men, men bags, men handbags. That's, that's foolish as hell. A man with a handbag, just because they call it a man handbag, don't make it so. The Jews or so-called blacks, there would be trouble. Anybody burdening themselves with the Jews would be destroyed. Are all the people of the earth against us today? Because I'm going to tell you, they are making deals and plans to exploit you every day. Exploit you every day. And by you being so damn simple, don't know who you are, don't know who your God is, don't know what your God, in order for you to be a God upon earth, but you always say, oh God, I'm a God. You're not a damn God. You... you you a damn janitor. You licking the damn flow. To, to, to be a God is to know your God and to know what he instructs of you to be like him. And you're not doing that. So when you get God's status, you mean, that means that you understand what your God wants you to do, require of you. And you follow it to the letter. Not like some of you wicked Negroes today that call yourself Hebrews, but y'all do do your own thing, but you're not following the most what the Most High God told you to do. That's not approved of God, because He said, "If thou would hearken diligently, diligently means something. Y'all need to look it up before you start trying to do your own thing." When you evaluate all the nations who burden themselves with the so-called blacks, that so-called white man is the top nation. He created the prison pipeline from classrooms to prison, three strikes law, mandatory sentences for crack cocaine, Jim Crow, pig laws, grandfather clause, and, and so on and so forth. He got so many laws on the law book against us. When our time of calamity had an end as as Ezekiel 35 and 5 said he didn't stop there he found he created laws and loopholes to put you back in prison the 14th amendment the 
14th Amendment put you back in prison if you what? Put you back in slavery if you what? Jordan, 14 men put you back into slavery if you what? Um, Dominic, answer? Prison. Yeah, you go to prison, you, you're a slave. You have no rights. He created loopholes like that. So, so that, that the prison pipeline can have some steam. All these companies paying these prisons ten dollars, ten, ten, uh, ten cents an hour or seventeen cents an hour to do work that people, it, people outside of prison can do for twenty dollars an hour. And guess who they're exploiting? Our people, blacks and Hispanics, Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. Okay. Let's okay. We go, we're gonna. This next section is called identifying Esau. I'm going to methodically identify who Esau is in the Bible. The sons of Noah were all made from the dust of the ground. Genesis two and seven. Jordan. Genesis two and seven. And the Lord God formed man off the of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul Noah's sons Shem, Ham and Japheth were all men of color there were no so called white men until Esau now there were no so called men of white men born so called white until Esau because Cain he was not born white he was turned white Let's get uh, Genesis 25 and 21, but this is not my topic today. Genesis 25 and 21, start. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. Isaac earnestly asked, which means entreated, entreated, the Most High God to bless his wife with a child, because Rebekah was barren, and Isaac's request was granted. They had been trying to Isaac marry Rebekah when he was 40 he didn't get a child by Rebecca until he turned 60 years old so they had been trying 20 years to have a child alright continue on Genesis 25 and 22 and the children struggled together within her and she said if it be so why am I thus and she went to inquire of the Lord children children the Most High God blessed Isaac with more than one child. These children were fighting, even in the womb. Rebecca went to ask the Most High, "Who? Why was there so much turmoil in her womb?" All right, come on. Genesis twenty-five and twenty-three. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in my in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people." And the elder shall serve the younger. Two nationalities and two different types of people will come from you. One is stronger than the other. And the one that comes out first shall serve the one that comes out last. Alright, Genesis 25 and 24. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Rebecca already knew there were twins, come on. Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Mm. They called his name Esau. See, introducing the so-called white man who is actually from light pink to dark red. And Harry. His biblical name is Esau. He knows who he is, but he is a chameleon wearing everybody's nationality. That's Esau. Because the fact is, he knows who he is. The attributes of the so-called white man, Esau. Come on. Esau's attributes are recorded in the Bible. Here are a few of them. Come on. Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in twins. 
Dwelling in what? Dwell, dwelling in twin, in tents. <laughs> dwelling in twins. <laughs> Boy, I thought you were about to turn this a little, that thing be a little piggy or something on Bugs Bunny. Where did he do it? Esau loves to be in the womb, in the woods, honey. So that's one of his attributes. It, 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 this undeniable. He loves to be in the woods hunting. They are always killing something for sport. Many of the things they hunt are not even eaten. See, when black folk go in the woods, you know, we, you know, majority of us are not that type. We, we don't go in the woods hunting stuff that we're not going to eat. If we go in hunting, we're going to eat whatever, you know, if, if you, they shoot a deer, that deer going to be eaten. They ain't going to go get the deer and we just want it stuffed and put the head on the wall. Uh uh. We going to eat it. We go fishing. Uh, I don't like catching and release. You would never get me out in the woods to my going fishing and we going to catch and release. Uh uh. It, 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 that, that is, yeah, it's joyful. It's, it's, it's some joy in catching the fish. But it's even better joy in eating it. Knowing that you provide something for your family to, to eat. Some fish. Fresh fish. Okay. Esau loved to go hunting. He loved hunting. He always in the woods hunting. Genesis 25 and 29. Come on. And Jacob saw a pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. Jacob was preparing a stew and Esau came from the woods having killed, having killed anything and he was hungry. Come on. Genesis 25 and 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. That's, that's, that's what Jacob called him. Edom. Esau wanted the stew after Jacob added the meat. It turned the entire stew red until the blood cooks out. Cooks out of it. Esau liked the meat raw. Esau likes red raw meat. This is what it's saying. Because this stew that he was cooking, you know, once you get the beans and all that stuff tender and moist, and then you put the meat in, and, and if you got red meat, it is bloody. It's gonna, it's gonna turn the stew red. Esau liked his when he, when the meat just goes in. He just wanted it right there, red raw meat. And Jacob, like, you know, you're not mind that. He wait until the meat cook the stew. And it's not done. So Jacob called him Edom because he liked red raw meat. This is why Jacob called him Edom because it means red. More, more attributes of the so-called white man. Genesis 27 and 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. We're discussing the blessings bestowed upon Esau by his father Isaac. Come on. Genesis. Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Isaac told Esau that your hand, your lands will be the best part of the earth with sufficient rain in this season. Because the dew of the heaven from above mean, you know, it's going to be rain. It's going to be sufficient rain for the seasons. Come on. Genesis 27 and 40. Oh, hold, hold on. Now, that excludes... Esau being the heir, because the fact is, Arabs don't have uh, sufficient rain in the season. They live ba basically Arab means the desert, dry uh, desert lands and stuff. You know, Esau lived in the best part of the world where the land, the, where, where it rains in, in due season and it and, and it's sufficient to, to for crops and everything else. Come on, Genesis twenty-seven and forty. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from thou off thy neck. How would Esau get their lands? Esau lives by the sword. You've noticed how he goes into everybody's land and take what he wants? You think that Esau is paying for those precious metals they're taking from Africa that are used in these cell phones? You think he's paying for that? Who benefits the most from the African gold and diamond mines? Who benefits the most from that? I guarantee you, they, you know, they're going to probably pay a couple of African leaders, but 
the people are not benefiting from the sale of those jewelry, their jewelry, the African and diamond mine. There's some Jewish, Jew, so, so called Jewish person, you know, that, that benefits from all those diamonds that they sell it. Robbing these people's lands. And the gold. Here's more attribute Obadiah 1 and 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou shalt thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. They used to dwell in the rock. That's why they call them Caucasian. Because these this is the Caucasus, Georgia, Georgia, Russia, Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia is where they came from. Come on. Whose habitation is high. Love high skyscrapers. Come on. That, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down and, to the ground. And very prideful. So I've, I've thrown three darts and I've hit them bulls out of every one of them. Esau is very proud. He hardly ever admittedly accepts the advice of any so called black man, although he will steal their ideas and claim it as his own at a later date. Caucasian come from the cave dwellers of the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia, Russia. The cave dwellers live high in the cave of the rocks of the mountains. Now, in pride, the Caucasians build tall skyscrapers high in the sky. They don't think anyone can defeat them. Their power is massive, extending the continent. Cause Esau is like I said, you think you can't get, you think you are too, are too far out of Esau's reach in, the, in this country, in this world. You're not. He get, he coming at you. He come and get you anywhere. Obadiah one and four. Though thou shalt, thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And though thou hast set thy nest among the stars, then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Esau's symbol has always been the eagle. Greece, Rome, Spain, Britain, Portugal, America, all of their symbols are the eagle. Esau sets his nest upon the moon in 1969 with the famous phrase, The eagle has landed. Obadiah 1 and 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Esau are prolific thieves. They covet and steal everything. Not like regular thieves who steal your things and leave. Esau never leaves. He, he, he steals and steals and steals. They come with the sword and slay the inhabitants, make them mine the resources until the resources are all gone. After they steal the resources, they make merchandise of the people for entertaining them. Like you got all these athletes, football players, singers, you got all this. This is what Esau does. He's still exploiting us after he's taken everything from us. Our nationality, our language, everything, but he's still exploiting us. He still has not left. So, over there, one and five, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how did I cut off? Because you know what? You ain't cut off if somebody stole all your stuff. It might make you upset and sad. You might miss those things, but you can always buy that stuff back. Esau does never, he never leaves because the fact is, he done exploited you to the point where you ain't got nothing. No land, no nationality, no language. We don't have no land. And we're not there. You know, you call yourself an American as long as you want. Their, their laws don't apply to you. Because, uh, you know, if their laws apply to you. If you get put over and, and stop and they tell you step out of the car and you tell them why I got to step out of the car, it's going to be totally different when a white person asks that question. You know, it's going to be a totally different scene because the fact is, you can lose your life as a black man or a black woman. White man or white woman, they might ask, why, why I got to step out of the car? What have I done? Tell me what, tell me what I have done. It'll be a totally different scenario for you. So they laws are not for you. Y'all just got to understand that. Hope you do, because you know what? It'll save your life if you understand that, you know, you're not under their law. Unless they wanted you to be under their law. 
Okay, number four, the kingdom of heaven is not for the seed begotten by Esau. Matthew 34, no, Matthew 13 and 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. The Messiah spoke to the children, the people in parables. He spoke to the Jews in parables. He would explain these parables to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven must be explained. Let's explain the kingdom of heaven. Revelations 21 and 12. See, the fact is, once you understand what the kingdom of heaven is, then you understand it's not for everybody. Come on. And had a wall great high, and had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Name of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. These gates just had twelve, twelve uh, names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The good seed are all Israelite men sowing good seed and Israelite women. Matthew thirteen and twenty five. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. What is it? Okay. And went his way. What is this referring to? Let's get Isaiah twenty nine and ten. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. So we were sleeping. What men slept, come on. And hath closed your eyes. Okay. Um, in knowledge, come on. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. So he put upon us a deep sleep and covered our eyes. So while we were sleeping and, and had no knowledge of God, our enemy came <coughs> and sowed tares among the wheat. Tares look like wheat. But they are just they're weeds in the wheat. It look they, they they emulate wheat. No nutritional value at all. Okay, this is referring to a period when the Hebrews knew not the law, like during slavery. When we slept ignorant of God and the law, statutes and commandments, our enemy came and sowed seed into our Hebrew women. Although they look like wheat, they look like Hebrews, they are tares. This is, this is all this is saying. Hebrew 13 and 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Yeah, when these children were born and brought forth fruit, because the man sowed seed in the field, meaning he sowed seed in the woman, when these children were brought forth, he brought forth kids that looked like wheat, but looked like Hebrews, but they were tares. Come on. What are the... what? When the children were born, the tares' enemy seed appeared also. Come on. Matthew 13, 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not, didst thou not, thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? The servants of the household asked, Did you have children by your, by your wife to produce children of the kingdom? What do, what do these tares, the offspring of another nation, come from? Continue Matthew thirteen twenty eight. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? An enemy did this. These precepts will identify that enemy later. The servants wanted to gather up the tares. Why would they want to do that? Simple. The kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. Children born from Israelite men only. So the the good seed is the seed of the kingdom. The, 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 you know, the householder don't want nobody in the kingdom that is not of Israel. Let's continue on Matthew 13 and 29. But he said, Nay, lest while, while ye gather up the tares, ye grew up also the wheat with them. The householder said, let the tares, the enemy's children, and the wheat, Israelites, grow together because taking a child from their Hebrew mother will uproot her also. All right, Matthew 13 and 30. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. To do what? To burn them. Well, that means that they ain't getting in the kingdom. Come on. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let the tares grow until the harvest, and the reapers would gather the tares, bundle them, and burn them. 
The seed of another nation is not getting into the kingdom of heaven. Christ will explain to the disciples the mystery of this parable. Now, this telling you that the tares of those kids begotten by another nation. The, the men of Israel begot kids. Now, if you have kids of, 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 of another nation, they still his seed, but during the, during the laws of, uh, during the laws of Moses, it was against the law for them to be in, 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 in the congregation until the third generation, until the great grandchildren. Because most High God did not, you know, he didn't want, he was not a God of confusion. All right. All right, let's continue. Let's, let's get the explanation of what this tares and wheat and this harvest and this stuff mean. And the reapers and all that. Let, let, let the tares grow into the harvest and the reapers would gather the tares, bundle them and burn them. The seed of another nation is not getting into the kingdom of heaven. Christ will explain to the disciples the mystery of this parable. Let's get Matthew 13 and 36. We're going to start the explanation right now. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. When Christ sent the multitude away, the disciples wanted him to explain the parable about the tares. Man, tell us about that, the parable that you was saying about the tares and the, and the wheat. They wanted to know. Come on, Matthew 13, 37. He answered and said to them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Christ will identify the Son of Man because the Son of Man it doesn't mean the Son born out of Israel, out of, of out of out of the nation of Israel, Son of Man, born to a woman of Israel. Come on, Matthew thirteen thirty eight. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Children of the kingdom. So the twelve tribes of the children of Israel is the good seed. So are you sowing good seed? Does that mean that you are sowing your seed into Israelite women and, and men? The Israelite women are having Israelite men getting their seed sold into them. Getting seed sold into them. Children of the kingdom. It ain't going to be nobody else eligible for kingdom. So the, so the, the, the field is the, is the world, the, the good seed. The good seed are the twelve tribes of Israel, but the tares are the children of the wicked. Look, you didn't finish reading that. Read that again. Matthew thirteen thirty eight. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The good seed are the twelve tribes of Israel, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Let's identify the wicked. Job nine and twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth his faces of the judges thereof. It's not where and to his he. Okay, so. He said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who controls the earth today? That's the wicked one and Esau. It's the same people. One and the same. The wicked one is Esau. Let's get second Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. We are at the end of days, and Edom, the lover of red raw meat, or Esau, is in control of the world. There is no dispute in this. Come on. Matthew 13 and 39. The enemy that sells them is the devil. What? The enemy that sells them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Everything des described. So when, when, when people say the, the, the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of, this is the precept they're talking about. The enemy that sold the seed into, to our women are the devil. Christ is not only calling Esau the wicked one, but also the devil or the deceiver. The harvest represents the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Christ identified everything in the parable that he mentioned. Let's continue on Matthew 13 and 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The seed of the wicked, that's Esau that resemble the wheat, but are the seed of another nation. 
They are gathered and burned. Thus said the, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai the Christ. Because the Most High God is not, don't want no other seed in the kingdom that He only built for His children. Now, if you're talking about, you try to use uh, uh, Deuteronomy 23 and 2 and 23 and 7 to say that if you could bring other, uh, other nations into the congregation, you, you, according to these precepts, you cannot bring other nations, because the Most High God do not want tares of, of, of seed of a, of a man of another nation into a woman of, of a, our nation in our kingdom. He gonna root those out and burn them. So if a if a Edomite man have sex with an a Israelite woman, that's not an Israelite woman's child. Israelite Israelite. That's a, that's an Edomite. Continue on Matthew thirteen and what is forty one? No forty. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be the end of this world. At the end of the world, all of these women that got these Edomite babies, the babies by East Indians, the babies by other other nations, uh, uh, Asian women, and and uh, all of this amongst us, the angels going to decipher those, decipher those out, bundle them, and burn them. They not getting in the kingdom. The seed of the wicked, that's Esau, that resemble the wheat, but are the seed of another nation, they are gathered and burned. Thus said our Lord and Savior, Yahweh shall the Christ. Continue on, Matthew 13 and 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. The terrors are one aspect of the destruction that would occur. Those sinners of the Israelites will be destroyed, and those nations who have offended will be destroyed also. So, if you being hooked up with an Edomite man, or an East Indian man, or, or a, a man of another nation, when the Most High God told you in Deuteronomy 7 and 3, not to do that, you're not making it either. Not only he gonna bundle your ch your child up with other tares and burn them, he gonna he gonna put your butt to death too. You're not getting in the kingdom either. Continue on. Matthew thirteen and forty two, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This would be how the earth will get cleansed once again. This is what the Bible say regarding who can enter the congregation and why Esau the devil is not allowed in the congregation. Any seed that is not of the nation of Israel will be burned with fire. So you trying to bring any other nation into our congregation? I don't care if you are an Israelite woman those are tares because the seed is begotten of the man that child is not doesn't become our nation you know that's that's the consequences you want to deal with because they got all the resources I understand why women do that I, I, I know I'm not a desirable man by, by most women because the fact is no I don't give a damn how much education I, I have but compared to the white man who could be no education and can and, and can and climb way up higher than I can with with degrees and certifications and, and, and all these different things they can climb up higher. I can understand why women wouldn't want to be dealt with me, deal with me, but I consider myself pure gold because I know I have a God that loves me and, and I love my Elohim so. And, and the fact is, I, I, I'm diligent when it comes to His Word. I try to do the things that He asks me to do. You know, I'm not going to mess around and, 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 and smear His Scriptures to try to make it mean what I want it to mean. There's a lot of different things I've done in my life that it made changes because I saw His law. Things that, that, that changed the way I live my life. Because if I see it in the Bible, that's it. Well, okay, you know, I can't, I can't argue with that. 
But anyway, I'm going to tell you what the Bible say. I know, I know, sister, you might get upset with with the word, but you know what? That's not this. this like I said, I'm just bringing the word, and I'm I'm bringing it full circle to tell you what Deuteronomy 23 and 2, 23 and 7 mean, according to all the other scriptures that I brought before you. Nope, it doesn't mean that. Nationality means you know according to the the seed of the father and if, if another nation begot a seed in the woman you know the, the, the woman is not, never mentioned in the Bible regard, regarding begotting it, it it come through the man the seed is through the man As you know the fact is the man is the woman is the man is not of the woman but the woman is of the man remember that but anyway hope you guys got some out of this uh, I'd like to thank again I'd like to thank my 20,630 plus Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers uh, my Facebook page is the at sign live L-I-V-E Shabbat class all one word again at live l-i-v-e shabbat s-h-a-b-b-a-t class c-l-a-s-s all one word youtube page is live l-i-v-e shabbat s-h-a-b-b-a-t class c-l-a-s-s all one word there feel free to like subscribe even join or whatever leave a comment now if you are not of my nation if you're not uh, of my nation, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the island, those of the transatlantic and the sub-Saharan slave trade, don't leave nothing negative on my page. I don't care if you are married to a to a black woman or anything else like that. If you are not of my nation, I only concern myself with the people of my nation that can be saved that can get into the kingdom that can get into one of those twelve gates and you know because we are so confused we we don't know what gate we gonna be staying because you know what I may be thinking I'm Judah but I might be Gad or I might be Reuben we don't know but when we get to the gate and the angels say no you over there no you in the wrong gate son go over there because everything has been stolen from us we only going to assume based on location, the things that the the the, the, uh, the curses that happened to us. We can only assume that. But anyway, hope y'all got some out of this. And with that, family and friends, I like to say shalom. Shalom.